Hello, this is Daughter of Christ. This article here about Islam and feminism is one of many and part of a popular wave, especially in America, trying to push the narrative that Islam is a feminist religion. Now, what is feminism? Feminism is defined as a movement to achieve the political, economic, personal and social equality of the sexes, especially in societies that prioritize the male point of view where women are treated unfairly. Now, this article says, contrary to American popular belief, Islam has a culture and history of women empowerment. In the Quran, women are men are described as equals in everyday actions and responsibilities. Really? Is that actually true? Notice it doesn't quote a verse from the Quran to support that statement. It goes on to mention Khadija, who encouraged Muhammad to believe in his prophethood, but it neglects to mention that when he married her, he was poor and a lot younger, and that he actually used her wealth for himself to raise her, his profile. It also conveniently does not mention his other wives, like his child bride Aisha, whom he forced himself upon age nine. It doesn't mention Sauda, whom he almost divorced when he no longer found her attractive because she had grown old and had gained weight. She begged him to avoid a divorce by giving away her rights to another wife. Nor does it mention the anguish of his wife Hafsa, who caught him with his sex slave Maria on her own bed. Nor does it mention Sophia, whom Muhammad took as a war captive, having killed her husband, her father and whole tribe, and took her into his tent the very same night. The article doesn't mention how Muhammad had 11 wives at the same time, almost three times as many as the Quran itself allows Muslims, with many stories of jealousy and contention between them, as they all competed for his time and favor. Yes, well, that's every feminist dream, isn't it? To be part of a large harem, all doting on one man. Now let's remember the definition of feminism again, as we look at the Quran itself, Surah 434 where it says, men are in charge of women. Notice that it's a very simple statement. Men are in charge. There are not, men are women are not equal. It is also the same verse that later orders men to forsake wives in bed and beat them if they're disobedient. There is nowhere in the Quran allowing women to forsake the bed or beat men if they're disobedient. Punishment is only one way towards the woman. So where is the feminist equality here? Now let's look at what Muhammad thought of women. And let's look at hadith, a hadith where he puts women amongst animals. This is Sunan Ibn Majah, hadith number 1003. It says, the prayer is severed by a woman, a dog and a donkey. Wow, so a woman here is listed with animals that ruin a man's prayer. It means if you are praying and there happens to be passing by a dog, a donkey or a woman, that prayer is ruined. Now let's look at another hadith where it talks about the political aspirations of women, Muslim women, and how can they, they can be achieved. This is from Al-Bukhari. It says, the Prophet said, a people who make a woman their ruler will never be successful. That means a nation who have women in leadership positions will never have success. So in modern, modern examples of this are like Merkel in Germany and until recently, Theresa May in the UK. It is ironic and funny that it's these kind of countries that Muslims run to to escape the prosperity of Muslim nations. This was just a snapshot of the value of women in Islam. There are many other Islamic sources that degrade women, and it is beyond the scope of this video to mention them all. So to say Islam is a feminist religion is frankly a joke. It is one thing to do taqiyya and deceive, but it's another to take it to a whole new level. To say Islam and Muhammad is a feminist is like saying Hitler was a Jew lover. Please stop lying and stop mocking people. Stop insulting our intelligence. If Muhammad were to come back, he would be the first to put you down and condemn you for saying such things. And to prove this, here is what Muhammad would think of the article. And since he wouldn't be able to read the article, having been illiterate, here is what he would think of the picture. 
Makeup is adornment and is forbidden to be seen. And the ladies here in the picture have makeup on. So this is haram. Plucked eyebrows is forbidden. And women who do so are cursed, according to Muhammad. Hadith number 4170 in Sunan Ibn Dawood. Nail varnish is to be avoided as it impedes the uh, ablution water from reaching the nails, which is needed for prayer five times a day. And it's good that this lady is whispering to her friend because a woman's voice can be a problem, according to Surah 33, verse 32. We pray for all Muslim women who Muhammad has disrespected, humiliated, and dehumanized. The value of a woman as a human being, as someone created by in the image of God himself, has been restored by Jesus Christ, who, ha, who came for men and women to save all by his blood. And it says in Galatians 3.28, there is no male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. We pray for Muslim women to come to Jesus Christ, the Savior, who gives them the value and dignity that Muhammad took away. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.